All right, welcome back, everybody. Wicked Sources. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Broadcasting live from Los Angeles, I'm your host, Mike. And every week, I bring you news info that can affect you, including alternative products that can bring a little comfort to your life. This week, we're going to talk about the updates on the flavor ban. It's been going on for a number of years. Um, a lot of different companies have been affected. Many states have different rules, but across the nation, we have a blanket law that prevents flavors from being in pre-filled pod-based systems. But what's going to happen to the flavors that are coming in bottled form? Big question. So here in Los Angeles, this is the last county that has not been affected by the flavor ban. And the big question is, is when is that hammer going to fall? Because the rest of the state has already banned flavors as a whole. I talk to a lot of different people who travel around. They travel for work. Um, they could be from uh, Palmdale, Lancaster, Victorville, um, surrounding areas of Los Angeles. And when I speak to them, they say, oh, yeah, we can't get this anywhere. All of our shops in our areas no longer carry anything flavored. So the last place that remains is L.A. County. What are they waiting for? This is what we're going to try to find out. I've been calling around. I've been trying to speak with um, local leaders in our county to get a grasp of what the hell's going on behind the scenes and when can we expect this radical change. The next aspect of this is a formulation change. Some weeks back, I had made a quick clip informing you guys that seven days, the Reds Apple series of products finally came back on the market. And you're wondering, when were they ever gone? Well, when the PMTA laws came into effect and required all vape juice products that are uh, new to market that came after August of 2016, they required those companies to submit applications for all of their SKUs. Reds said, no, we are not going to do that. One of many who really couldn't do it. A lot of brands disappeared from there. I made a video about it um, that specifically was saying this, that a lot of our favorite juices were going to disappear. And sure enough, they did. Some of them found a way back, and that was Reds. Now, if and when we have this flavor ban effective in Los Angeles County, because it already is effective in the rest of the state, I can say almost definitively a new formulation of these flavored products will come to market, possibly already in the works now, possibly um, already in existence now for some brands who have made the transition. So what am I talking about, right? Well, most vape juice brands, the way they make their products is with tobacco. The nicotine is tobacco derived, and this is where the taxation comes in. This is where the laws that prevent them from operating come in. This is where the flavor bans come in. It's all surrounding the fact that they are tobacco derived. So you might be wondering, well, then is there another way? Then you are correct, my friend. There is another way. What Reds did essentially was reformulate the same exact flavors you love, the same satisfaction of the nicotine, but with synthetic nicotine. If you're wondering if this is safe, yes, it is safe. They're not the first ones to do this. Some of the earlier brands in 2015 and 2016, when um, the tobacco taxes had increased, dramatically increased, some of these companies already made the switch they weren't as large of brands, so nobody really knew. If you had vaped on it, you may have noticed that there was a slight difference. It was a little bit smoother. That was the only change for some of those products. Well, now we have Reds, who has done something very similar. They have transitioned to a synthetic nicotine base instead of a tobacco version of it. Makes a huge difference in the eyes of the law. When this flavor ban occurs here in Los Angeles County, you can count 
on the fact that many of these companies who have the means to do this will do this. They'll just reformulate to synthetic nicotine, bypassing that law, and therefore, because it's no longer tobacco-derived, their products will still remain on the market for the most part. Now, there are aspects of this that I can't foresee because I'm not a lawmaker. Um, There could be some things that can get amended in the law down the road that include synthetic nicotine products. But for now, since it hasn't been mentioned in any of the uh, documents I've looked at, I'm going to assume that this is the loophole that will be used. How this will occur for the rest of the nation, how it might affect different states, I don't know. I know that some states have done the same thing, some haven't. There's still other loopholes for, let's say, disposables. But I'm really thinking about the bigger picture now, which is what's going to happen to the bottled products. Anyways, I hope you found some good information here. This is all I have for today. I'll catch you guys on the next one.